Hello and let's talk love. Today we are having a discussion yet again like we do every week with Professor Herman Manyora and the topic I have today is a marriage topic that is might be familiar prof with many Kenyans because last year we had the issue of the government issuing a directive that police officers should not senior police officers should not date junior officers to prevent issues of uh, these love triangles and murders and things we've heard on the news so straight to the story today someone reached out and says hello Kimadi I need help uh, share my story with prof but withhold my name she says I joined the force last year and I fell in love with a senior uh, police officer and following the directive and the new regulations in the force, we are not allowed to advance our relationship. But she says, it's suggesting that I quit my career so that we can build a family together. I am torn between, I don't know what to choose. I love the man, but I would also, I, it's always been my dream to be in the police force while at the same time juggling the idea of a family dream. So. Where would you advise this young lady to go? Because if she follows the man, she loses her career. If she gives up her career, she doesn't know what she's getting into. I've no, I, 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 I'm not sure that was something that was to be implemented. It was going to happen. And it or happened. whether it was a suggestion from the... It was from Matiangi says, senior officers, very senior officers should not be involved with junior ones. But you see, first of all, people killing others is not confined to the police that was the issue back no. then. <laughs> those are mental health issues which the government is not paying due attention to. yeah no government is not paying due attention to mental health issues but within prof, the police and outside the police outside so the police you cannot use that yeah as as a basis for coming up with such a, a, a ridiculous draconian you know human beings are human beings yes doctors marry nurses they do they're, they're, they're juniors eh? uh, Teachers, married students who have finished school, you know, you know, mm. uh, man eateth where man worketh, <laughs> people say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you cannot say, workplace robots. because I am a, a senior police officer, mm. I cannot fall in love with a junior police officer. What somebody could be talking about is abuse in the police and the disciplined forces. Because these are disciplined forces. And because they are disciplined forces, discipline must be maintained. Uh, one way of avoiding issues is to discourage relationship between uh, ranks, especially between higher ranks and lower ranks. Uh, uh, the military is a little more clear and straightforward. Yeah, it's straight. Don't do that. Uh, but you see, the police is civilian, really. It's more civilian than... It's not military. Yes. It's civilian. Right. Uh, so, personal issues are, are not very easy to handle in the, at that level. Uh, therefore, I don't think Mat Matiangi's words have the force of law. They don't. But now, Prof, the question I'm asking, the, the, yes. the direction of my discussion is, should, is it okay when a woman finds herself at a crossroads like of this, that. where you have to choose... You want to start a family, but you also she is passionate about being in the police force. But, but this man is telling her, choose one, because now we are in, in that precarious I was situation. just trying to remove I understand that, yes, yes. So that people don't, don't think we don't know. Let's delve they into must it. know we know. We know, you know, you always know. Yeah, and we are saying, mm. we can discuss it knowing very well there is no law about it. And also knowing very well, it's not the only place it is happening. Knowing also well, it's not the only situation. People find themselves in similar situations. You, you want to marry a man, but he wants to go with you in America. He does. You've always talked about that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to go to America? Or you want to marry a man, he says, me, I'm looking at the future. Yes. I'm not looking at today alone. Passion will be there even when we are 90 years. Let's make our future. Me, I'm in Australia. You, you have to remain here. So that the projects that had started, you can now oversee them. Who knows, in 10 years, we may have succeeded so well, we will stay together all our lives. So let's sacrifice. You know, there are sacrifices. Somebody says, I want children. I want at least three. How many do you want? Oh, darling, me. I, me. Me, I can't manage more than two. Then you agree on two. You negotiate. Or one or mm. three. Then the, the, the next question is, look here. Come and you are taught to Zai to Malize. Those are choices people are making. 
So the woman chooses not to go to work. She gets children for like seven, eight years. Then she goes to work. And that's the basis of why you'll find some of these Western countries. You see mature people in class with undergraduates. A girl got married and she chose to raise her family first. Then now she's 32, she's coming to university. So what I'm trying to say is, there will always be situations where decisions will have to be made. Yes. The only thing I will not advocate for is one person. One person forcing a decision on the other. Because it doesn't last. You can force me because you are the man and I'm the woman. I agree, but inside me I'm not happy. I'm not willing. After five years, it, it doesn't work. It crumbles. Yeah. And then prof so uh, it should not be, what's of all, yeah. it should not be legislation. It should not be government forcing people not to love each other. No, it's it ridiculous. Government. Yeah, it does make sense. And number two, it shouldn't be one side. It shouldn't be the woman insisting that this is how the relationship will be. Neither should it be the man saying, because I'm marrying you. Mm -hmm. And you are working in Nairobi as a teacher. No. After our marriage, Utena Kufundisha Nyumbani. No, that is not. That's not right. But there will be decisions. So tell that lady, mm. in life there will be decisions to be made. To be made. So long as nobody is forcing the other, put everything on the table, guided by your love. And nothing should be difficult to discuss. Right. And, and Prof, is it getting more impractical for uh, two people in a, in a marriage partnership to share a salary? You know, before it was enough for just a man to be working. You've said again, women shelf their careers to build families and go back. But is it becoming increasingly difficult today for a, a, a family of two people with kids to say your salary is enough, I can sit back? Is it uh, forcing us to always have both of them working? You know, Are we there? Different cultures yeah. handle these things differently. They do, but it seems all cultures are converging now in the world of it today. It can't be all. There are very traditional conservative cultures in the East. Right. Where even if women are working, there are very few women working. And it, when they work, they do very humble, they join very humble careers. Yeah. Uh, you see, working is not about money alone. What is it about? Working could be about a career, about a passion, about a conviction. Purpose of life. About purpose in life. You don't just work to get money. It would mean all these people with billions will never do anything. People have money to eat without working, without doing business. But children will give a woman purpose just as much as a, a, a day job. Someone will argue. No, not that. Yes, there are women who are working, but they would do anything to be able to get to a position where they just remain home with their children. It's just that it's not possible because of because they must bring money home. Right. But equally, there are women who have all the money, but they cannot come home, take care of the children because they are seeking fulfillment through their careers and other engagements outside. Yeah. So are we just it's realizing uniform. that... It's not uniform. It's not uniform. It's no. not uniform. All we can say is this. Yeah. Never try to sacrifice family on the altar of career or money. Someone there will, will always be times person. when you'll have to choose mm. between family and that promotion. And I've told many people, because you know you are being promoted to a regional office. You know you will not stay in Kenya. You know, so stay before you country. take the job, you are happy with the promotion. Think about what it will have on your family. But people with serious career dreams and ambitions are getting into family proof. And then once they're inside, they realize, I didn't want to do this. The career is more important what than What you kids. need to do first is to... Operate from a point of love. All right. All right. Love for yourself, love for family, love for your children. And Everything else follows. Mm. I mean, how many people have given up on careers because of family? Many. How many people have been transferred and they say, well, if I can't remain here, I'm sorry I can't. But many people have given up family for careers. But there are also others who have been, allow me to use this word, All right. uh, stupid enough to think money is more important than family. That is a stupid decision. Then you'll come back to realizing you are wrong. Because obviously you'll be wrong. It, there can never be instances where money or career can be more important than family. And it doesn't mean the two are mutually exclusive. They are never no. mutually exclusive. They can be entertained. You'll always have both. But some people rarely spend time to look at a situation 
learn from a position of love and family, talk with your spouse, talk with parents, talk with friends. There are people the first time Barua in Nigeria to give you a promotion. I may jump and I know a champagne. <laughs> yeah, it's and yet this 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 promotion uh, could be the beginning of the end for your family. It could sow a bad seed for your family. Yes, because this promotion you know very well. Anybody who has been doing this job, they spend more time in South Africa than in Kenya. And you know it. You know it. You know it. But you don't tell your partner. Yeah. And it's not like you are going to be staying there so that you can go with family. No. You're always in the skies. You know, you are from the regional office in mm -hmm. South Africa for two days. You are expecting the head office in Johannesburg, in, 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 in London. Then you're back in Nairobi. You in, yeah. You are in the African Coca-Cola something here. Mm -hmm. You have been promoted. Go to Lagos. You are supposed to be in, 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 in is it a, whatever, the Atlanta, whatever it is. The Coca-Cola headquarters. You know it very well. And you are celebrating it. And you have a young family. And you will regret it. That's what you you're saying. You will regret it, certainly. Because you can tell people, given my, my family now, right. at my age, I have young children. I need to prepare my boys to go to school in the morning. I have two beautiful boys. I know the money is good. I love the career. But surely, I don't think it's good for my family. They will understand. In the process, they could even give you something local here. Yes. Yeah. That's what Google does. When you jump up, you mess everything up. So, we can advise people is that um, there will be many things that look very attractive. But think twice, because they will affect your life. At the end of the day, you'll just come back to, to where you started. Those things may sound very nice, but you'll come back home. Full circle. And by the time you come back home, so many things will have gone wrong. That the money you got cannot correct those things. You'll watch and say, I wish I knew. So many. So don't jump to an op for an op just to an opportunity that comes. Because when we went to America, you can't even sleep. You're popping champagne. I remember I remember a friend, <laughs> another friend, there used to be a very good guy on KBC Radio. Yeah? I want to mention him. English service. No, uh. Swahili mean would work Swahili service. Uh. Idaya Taifa. Idaya Taifa. Alikuwa na pendwa sana na wata na wasikizaji. Salam na mahanja mzuri. Alituma salams. Sasa siku moja sema niko na mood kweli kweli leo naenda Ujerumani next week. Ay! <laughs> he kept saying it and say God rest his soul. Yeah. He's a good guy. What happened? I'm not saying he died because he went to a German, but I'm just remembering that uh, that night. He's traveling to He's traveling to He's going to Germany. Yeah. And what Africans here don't know is that many of these Wazungus get serious postings to Africa. They don't take them up. They don't want to come. They don't want to come because it will disrupt their family and so on and so forth. So you need to consider many factors. As we just jump into it. No, we shouldn't do that. All right, let's end it there, Prof. Uh, that's some gems there. And uh, circling back to what we discussed at the beginning of the show is this lady who is looking to get into the force, who is already in the police force, but is asking, should I marry or should I continue with my career without hanging my boots? Thank you for joining us in the discussion today on Let's Talk Love. My name is Kimadi. I'll see you in the next episode.